this is the Provoke Prawn, and I upgraded my Steam Deck, and I'm going to show you how you can too. Now, I might have a buttery smooth voice, but don't let that convince you that this is going to be an easy task, because it isn't. However, it is well worth doing. Now, in this video, I'm using the Corsair MP600 and some treats from Dbrand that I'll get to later on. And I'll leave everything that I used here linked in the description so you can find out more. But I want to show you the steps for this process. Essentially, what I'm doing is taking a 256 gigabyte Steam Deck and upgrading it for a one terabyte drive from Corsair. The MP600 Mini is obviously a driver that's designed because it's the right size to fit perfectly in a Steam Deck. And Corsair asked if we're interested in doing a video on this. And I thought, why not? Because one of the problems with the Steam Deck is the size of the internal storage. Now, obviously, you could buy a micro SD card, and I'd highly recommend doing that if you're not interested in upgrading your Steam Deck, as I'm about to. But having internal storage is obviously better because it's faster, potentially, and also just gives you more. Because if you're combining a one terabyte drive internally and then a one terabyte, for example, micro SD card, you've got loads of room. But what I found was a 256 gigabyte internal drive fills up far too easily. Now the process for actually upgrading your Steam Deck and swapping out the NVMe drive is fairly straightforward. I'll link to a couple of articles in the description from iFixit which talk through the steps for this. And you can see some of it in the background here. I've shortened the steps because I'll be honest, it took a long time. It took me several hours to get this done. And it is also fiddly and nerve wracking, I'll be honest, because you have to be very careful. Obviously you don't want to break anything. You've got to tease the back off as you can see. So there's multiple screws to remove at start and then use various different plastic clips to basically pull the thing apart very gently, taking great care. Now I've used an iFixit kit that I happen to have already anyway, and it's a screwdriver set, but it also comes with these extra things like this pick that you can see me using here, and then a plastic lever. You need to take various screws out, remove the back plate, then tease off this aluminium foil at the back here to access another screw, taking care with every step of the way, because obviously there's a battery at the rear here, and you don't want to damage any of the internal components. I'm also standing on an ESD mat, so make sure you haven't got any electrostatic discharge, potentially destroying my Steam Deck, because that'd be less than ideal. And then removing all these screws and the back parts here to be able to access the NVMe drive. Now, it is an NVMe, so it's fairly straightforward in order to swap out, but you can't just use any old one, because a standard NVMe drive that would fit in a PC, usually in a gaming PC, is too long so you need the right size this is a smaller drive which is why this mp600 mini is ideal for this use because you'll see that it's a very small space and it's really tiny the first step here is also to remove the battery because obviously important we don't do any damage to the system and valve has actually really cleverly designed this with a little pull tab on it so you can just tug it out which is really nice so i will say from these few steps that you will see that some of these parts are really easy to do then you need to use the screwdriver to remove the m2 screw down the bottom here and then just tug out the pre-installed M2 drive. Now it's worth noting, obviously this has all my games on it, but also the Steam OS. So I am gonna lose all of that. However, I will show you the process for what you do to sort that out and to reinstall it. And it's fairly straightforward with some caveats. Now this has a ESD shielding on it. So it's important that you keep this silver shield to protect the drive from being fried. So we're gonna replace it with the MP600 mini, which as I say is a one terabyte drive in this instance. And this will essentially give me quite a big upgrade, but this is a blank drive with nothing on it. And then you've got to go about the process of putting the cover back on, which was fiddly, let me tell you. I've shortened a lot of the steps in this because they took ages. And if I left the full footage in here, it would have been about an hour long and you would have been bored and left by now. <laughs> but you can see that then you basically just repeat what you just did in reverse order. So push the drive back in once that cover's on and re-screw it down plug the battery back in, put the protective cover back on, put the screws back on, and then put all the screws back on the case itself. Now, be careful because the screws are all different sizes, so if you are going through this process, make sure you put them in a logical place where you can easily find the right ones for each of the different parts because there are different length screws, different size screws, and you may also need a different size Phillips head screwdriver bit as well. The iFixit kit that I use for building PCs is really handy for this build process because I had the right bits in there, as well as the little plastic clips for taking things apart. So I'll link to that in the description because it's a really handy kit that I'd highly recommend anyway because I use it for all my PC builds. 
and just for doing this process it was really great as well in various different ways now the back of the steam deck is going back on now and just putting everything back the way it should have been including the aluminium foil cover over that screw because you don't want to short anything out during this process or leave anything in a position where it could get damaged when you start to use your steam deck this is my own personal steam deck that i paid a lot of money for and waited ages for so i really didn't want to ruin it just for the sake of upgraded internal storage However, I found that it was all right. It actually clips together really nicely and unclipped really nicely. And I was quite pleased with myself that I didn't manage to damage anything because I'm very impatient and heavy handed and clumsy. So the fact that I managed to do this shows that Valve's done a good job of building it in a way that's actually possible to take apart pretty easily. So you can maintain it yourself. Then it's just a case of putting all those screws back in. Now, as I said already again earlier, you want to make sure that you put the screws back in the right place. You'll notice the ones in the middle here around the valve logo, for example, have smaller holes than the ones on the outside. They are a different size and length, so it's just worth keeping that in mind. Just take care if you are doing this to make sure you put them back in the right place. Now that's all the hardware level parts done, and that was relatively straightforward, although I've shortened some of the steps. If you follow the guide from iFixit, you will see how you do it and you've obviously seen some of it in the video here but there's no point in me going into the full length of the entire thing now if you go over to the steam deck recovery instructions you'll find instructions on how to download steam os because we need an image of that on a usb thumb drive which we can then insert into the steam deck and essentially boot from that to then go through the setup process it recommends using this Rufus software, which you can download, and I'll leave links to all this in the description. You then need a USB drive that you can use Rufus to format and then apply the ISO image from Steam into it so you can see the Steam Date Recovery file, for example. You basically go through this process in there, select it from your downloads, and then start the process. Rufus takes quite a while to format your thumb drive and get it ready for this process, I will note. And it took about half an hour. Now, this is a point where I want to tell you that this was possibly the hardest bit of the entire thing, which is insane because it seems like it should be easy. But what I found was the drive I was using just didn't work. And Rufus should work in theory, but what I found was after half an hour, I used that drive and then I had problems with it. I'm going to show you why, but I have an adapter that connects to a USB port. So this is USB-C on one end and USB-A on the other. And if you're lucky enough to have one of these, then you can just insert your drive into that adapter and then plug it into the Steam Deck. Then what you need to do is hold the volume down and tap the power button until it beeps and then it will come on. And then in theory, it's meant to try and boot from that drive via a menu system. But what I found is that drive just wouldn't work. I tried four different thumb drives and none of them would work. And in the end, I gave up and I used this USB SSD from Corsair as well, which I'll also link to in the description. I formatted that and put it on there instead. Followed the same process. I use Rufus, but it's on an external SSD rather than a USB, and it is possible to do this. And this is actually easier because you'll notice it's USB-C on one end to USB-C on the other end. It connects right up to the Steam Deck with these. No adapter needed because obviously you don't have a USB-A connection on there. And then you just go through that process and then you click to re-image your Steam Deck. So you're basically reinstalling SteamOS. It gives you a warning that will wipe any data that's on there. But obviously we don't have any data that's on there. There's nothing on the drive. It's blank. So it's fine. We're basically going through the installation process to install SteamOS as a straight install. Now, obviously, this takes some time. It took ages to do this which was a pain as well. But then you get to the process of basically setting up your Steam Deck as it was when you first got it. And you've got the login screen. I'd highly recommend using Steam Guard on your phone, by the way, to scan that QR code to shorten the login process because that makes life a lot easier. And then once you've got there, you've got to then re-download all your games. So that's one downside. But if you go into the settings, you can go to the storage section just to make double sure that you've actually got the amount of space that you're expecting from your NVMe drive, which I can happily confirm I now have. So I've just got over just 900 gigabytes. Next, dbrand sent over a while back the kill switch setup from them, which is basically a case for your Steam Deck, which has a kickstand and other things on it. But if you're in the know, you will know that there's a problem with this setup 
where if you have a certain fan in your Steam Deck, then you can't use it. And I happen to have that fan in my system. It's a Delta fan, which means there's a problem with the magnets on the back of the kill switch case, which can basically slow the fan down and then lead to overheating problems. It's something that they're working on. I'll link to the Reddit discussion around it because it was a big thing about it at the time. It was quite a few months ago. I've had this in my office for a while, and I thought while I had the Steam Deck apart, I'd check and see which fans I have to see if it could actually work. Unfortunately, it won't. I'm not going to take the risk. But it is a nice thing in theory. It's a nice hefty case with a kickstand on it. You also get some thumbstick caps that will go over it and a skin as well. Now, I can use the skin without a problem. And I thought, well, it's a good excuse now while I'm doing this to use that skin because it is pretty nice. So it's basically a view of the internals of the Steam Deck. Now, dbrand has a really nice video guide on how to install this. So I'm not going to show you the exact process for it all the way through. But basically, you just need to seat it down over the top. In theory, it's really easy. But again, I'm really clumsy. And I often find that I struggle with this sort of thing. Even grip tape on mice can be a problem sometimes. But you can see like the speaker venting, the obviously the, the buttons and all everything else has already had cutouts on it. So it's fairly easy to line up fairly straight. The problem areas are going to be the top and right hand side where you have to basically get it to go around the edge of the Steam Deck. They recommend using a hairdryer to do this because you can warm it up so that you can manipulate it so you then don't have creases in it. So I went through this process and this actually didn't take very long at all and I was pleased with how it came out. I think it looks really nice. You'll see from that shot at the beginning and I'll see the full finished thing in a minute. But what you can see is a really sort of nice aesthetic to it. There's actually two different variations of this skin as well. It comes in gloss or matte versions. I chose the matte one because it kind of goes with the matte look of the Steam Deck as it is anyway as a standard, standard out of the box. So I thought it was pretty nice. But it adds a nice sort of a personalization to it. Now dbrand has loads of other skins that are available on their site as well and it's worth noting that the kill switch also came with like a glass screen protector and other things so if you do purchase the kill switch they are working on a new and improved version to account for the fan differences in the Steam Deck so it's worth bearing that in mind but you will see that you have various different things that are included with it and options so you can customize it. There's obviously a skin for the trackpad as well. So you can see that's got a pretty nifty finish and it basically looks like you can see the internal workings of the entire thing. You have it for the right and left side so you end up with a really nice finish overall on it. And now I've got a Steam Deck with upgraded storage and improved looks. So if you want to do the same to yours, check out the links in the description to the products that are used as well as the steps for doing all these so you can find out in detail what you're meant to do. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.